Welcome to Tests of Primary Hemostasis. In this video, we will discuss platelet agrigometry. We have the following take home points Platelet agrigometry helps diagnose qualitative platelet disorders. Platelet agrigometry tests the platelet aggregation response to various agonists. Common agonists include ADP, arachidonic acid, and collagen. We'll begin with a brief review of the role of platelets in primary hemostasis. When the in intact endothelium is injured, platelets at or near the injury encounter agonists and become activated, a conformational change that exposes the GP2B3A receptor. Thus, platelets adhere to the endothelial surface where they encounter additional agonists that cause platelets to secrete the contents of their alpha and delta granules. These granules release adhesive proteins and agonists that stimulate platelets to stick to each other in a process called aggregation. We test this process in the lab using platelet agrigometry. Platelet agrigometry makes use of a light source, which emits a light that is measured by a detector. Between the light and the detector is placed a clear container filled with a suspension of platelet-rich plasma. Light does not pass through to the detector until an agonist is added, beginning the process of platelet aggregation. The resulting light transmission is detected and recorded as a function of time. The data is shown as a graph with percent aggregation on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. The platelet aggregation response to ADP shows an initial wave of primary aggregation demonstrated by the initial downward inflection then follows a secondary wave of aggregation, which requires release of platelet intracellular granules. No response to ADP may indicate a defect or absence of the ADP receptor or use of a P2Y12 receptor blocker like clopidogrel. ADP response may also be blocked with high concentrations of aspirin. If there is no secondary wave, it suggests a storage pool defect in which no granules exist or a secretion defect in which the granules exist but are unable to be secreted. Another agonist is arachidonic acid, the substrate for the cyclooxygenase or COX pathway. Inhibiting the COX pathway prevents production of thromboxane A2, thus inhibiting platelet aggregation. If there is no aggregation response to arachidonic acid, it may mean there is an aspirin-like defect, a congenital defect in the COX pathway, or non-response to thromboxane A2. Testing aggregation response to thromboxane A2 can help distinguish the cause. Another agonist is collagen. Collagen induces platelets to release their granular contents, thereby promoting aggregation. If there is no aggregation response to collagen, it may suggest a missing collagen receptor, collagen receptor inhibition, or a storage pool defect if there is also a defect in the secondary response to ADP. For a positive control, we use ristocetin. It is not an agonist promoting aggregation. Ristocetin is necessary for von Willebrand factor mediated platelet agglutination. If there is no agglutination response to ristocetin, it implies either decreased plasma von Willebrand factor or Bernard Soulier syndrome, which is due to a defect in the platelet receptor for von Willebrand factor, GP1B95. If there is agglutination response to ristocetin only, with no aggregation response to other agonists, it indicates a defect in the GP2B3A platelet receptor, as can occur in the congenital disorder of Glanzmann's thrombosthenia. In summary, platelet agrogometry helps diagnose qualitative platelet disorders. Platelet agrogometry tests the platelet aggregation response to various agonists. Common agonists include ADP, arachidonic acid, and collagen. This ends our video on tests of primary hemostasis, platelet agrigometry.